Hello everyone. Yes, we're talking about the most recent buzz talking avatar known as the multi-talk. Essentially, these AI models are utilized for conversational style lip sync AI video, which is a talking avatar AI model that supports several actors in a video scene. As you can see, all of these examples involve many people speaking, single people talking, or even singing. This can be used for musicians, cartoon animations, and various drama scenarios. It seems very cool. And, as you can see, the lip syncing is done quite smoothly. It's not like the old days where we used previous AI lip sync techniques that just masked the mouth and did animations on the mouth or adding extra facial expressions, such as live portrait or latent sync, where it only masks a certain area. AI lip sync are going to another level. So, we're going to check out multi talk today. First, We'll see some information, and then we'll dive in, how can we run that locally? We have to understand that this is kind of a high requirement AI model to run. If you need to use a single GPU for inferencing, it's recommended to use the 480p when 2.1 video model weights and a single GPU. Ideally something like the RTX 4090 or 5090, basically anything above 16GB of VRAM. Ideally, that should work for running this. Now, one thing to note is that on this GitHub project page, you'll see that it doesn't support low sampling steps techniques yet. However, when we talk about COSVID, we're able to lower the sampling steps while still maintaining pretty nice images and video frames. Also, we've recently got Light X2 v when 2.114 BCFG Distillations LoRa model. We can use these two techniques to lower the sampling steps and maintain quality in some terms for generating videos. But for here we see that it doesn't have those yet. Luckily, in Comfy UI, we have the WAN video wrapper, which allows us to use that in collaboration with Multitalk for the WAN video's AI model. So, back to Multitalk. Here we have the files that we need to download. Of course for the AI model, go to the Multitalk Hugging Face page. When you go to the Files tab, you'll find the Multitalk Safe Tensor files, which are about 9.9 GB, so let's say 10 GB of file size here. This is only dedicated to the Multitalk AI model. It doesn't merge any other AI models like WAN 2.1 or any LoRa's for distillation. So, we will need WAN 2.1 and other LoRa's to make it a whole generation system. So, in the WAN 2.1, you'll need the WAN video wrapper of course to run that in Comfy UI. There's another separate branch that you can download. When you select the branch, you select Multitalk for having this Multitalk enabled, running the talking avatar which has included those Python codes in here. But there's a drawback. If you have your main branch of the WAN video wrapper running and you switch to Multitalk, it will override your existing WAN video wrapper which is the stable version of the wrapper custom nodes package. Thankfully, our Patreon friends helped folk another repo of the Multitalk branch of the WAN video wrapper and he has uploaded that available to download as well. It's called Comfy UI WAN Video Wrapper Multitalk. So, this one is forked from the WAN Video Wrapper Multitalk branch. In that way, you can download this separate package without interfering with your existing WAN Video Wrapper main product branch. This is a great way, you know, to have two versions of the wrapper but not interfere with your main branch of the video wrapper, which is mostly the most stable WAN Video Wrapper. So if you want to test that, I recommend you fork the WAN video wrapper by yourself or use this WAN video wrapper multi-talk to play around with. We can have a testing version of the multi-talk in here. So I have downloaded this one as the repo, cloned it like the typical way we do. But once you have the clone of this, remember to go through the pip install requirements because in multi-talk here, it does have some new requirements that you need to install. One of the things that I needed to install newly was PyloNerms. Then, once you install that, like the typical way using the custom node repo folder, and then doing the pip install, you can get started with your comfy UI. But before that, you can try the example workflows right here, located in your subfolder as well in your custom nodes. Scroll down to the JSON files, which is called One Video Multitalk Test 1. You can test this one for the multitalk workflow. I have tried that, and it's pretty smooth. Look at that mouth lip syncing, it's not using just mass frames of the mouth or the face to animate that for the talking. It's using transformer models, the transformer architecture, to animate the whole video frame by frame like this, and as a whole video from an image. As you can see here, I have reorganized the example workflow in here, 
which allowed me to have a clear picture of what belongs to where in those all messy spaghetti connections. So back to the beginning of the workflow. As you can see, I have put the load video here because this AI model is able to identify the vocal and other background audios. You only need to pass the vocal from here for the sampling. This source video here I'm using for merging or at the last step of the video combined, you have your video result and this merges with that part only and the audio generation. I did it myself to calculate how many numbers of frames we need in the workflow to generate based on the audio's length. So, for example, I have an audio here, I pass this mp3 file, and then define the fps by using the flow constant, which is 25 fps, and I passed it here. We got the result number of frames, 125 here. So, this is how we set the basic settings parameters for the AI model to generate. The next thing I will input is the image. I have both ways here. You can load an image or have your image in a file path. Now I will most likely use the file path because... Usually the workflow I use will be integrating with AI agents such as N8N and pass all file paths as parameters and more automatic way or automation way of running the workflow by batch or just automatically with integrating with other language models etc. Therefore I have my image loaded in here and also define the width and height etc. And also the image reference here for what we need later on in the settings. So in here. The next step we will see the model loader. The model loader we are using is WAN 2.1. Now, you can use the base model, WAN 2.1 image to videos model. But here, I am using the fine-tuned model, the Fusion X FP16, which is also an image to video here. Because this AI model is using image to video, we are inputting an image to animate that as a video. Therefore we need this as the base, and then we need to add the multi-talk model loader. So, as we have downloaded in the hugging face in the previous steps, this is the file that we need to load in here. And as you can see, I also use the Light X2V CFG distillation LoRa models, therefore I can use a very low sampling steps and still generate the videos without losing too much data in the generated video results. The other setting, as usual, is that I use Torch Compile and Sage Attention, also swapping some blocks from the data from the model data. And then, right here, we got the VAE and the text encoder going to. The next thing is the text prompt. Now, the text prompt here, I'm using very simple basic text prompts. You don't need to describe too much because it is an image to video and it is mostly focused on the lip-syncing talking avatar. Just like the examples shown in Multitalk on the project page, where you see descriptions about the man and woman sitting outside and talking or two tech guys having a conversation in a podcast video. Something like that is good enough. So I have a guy speaking in the tech podcast in front of the camera, etc. This is just for reference how it will be able to do and in the sampling steps. This is more complex because, first of all, we will be adding a new multi-talk embed in here. So we have the multi-talk wave to VC embed node. Here we connect the audio files which is the vocal that we are getting from the beginning of this workflow to load the audio and then the numbers of frames. As I mentioned, we calculate the numbers of frames based on the length of the audio, and then I have the FPS as well. We defined that before in the beginning of the workflow. One more extra step is the Wave 2 VC. Now this model will be auto-downloaded the first time you run this custom node. Therefore, you don't need to worry about which files you gotta download or where you're gonna download them. You can just get this and download this Wave 2 VEC model. The first time it loads this workflow or loads this custom node, it will download it for you. Then looking above the area here, we have the image to video encode. As I mentioned, this is using the WAN 2.1 image to video model as the base. So we need the clip vision as well as the image to video encoder for our video. The next thing is that we will have the VE decode and pass on to generate our video in the last step here. So as you can see, we have one more thing here, which is the context options. And basically, this is the concept like an animate diff that we saw before, the context options. But in the transformer, diffusion transformer, we're seeing this able to divide each chunk of size as a set and generate each chunk next after next until it finishes the whole video length. So as you can see here, the context frames, we defined it as 81 frames as each chunk. And through each chunk in here, like this example, it will be generating this step by step like that. I should have a longer length of video later, and then we will see how that looks developed by each chunk running in the back end of the command prompt window.
but basically this is how it is able to generate over one minute or even two minutes of video length. For me, in some previous, most recent YouTube Shorts demos that I posted on my channel here, some of you have seen that. And yeah, we can do like over one or two minutes of video no problem at all, as long as you have time and your computer processing power is good enough to run this. So far, this demo is only a 5 second demo here as you can see, and I have the audio merged in this video together using this input here. So far I have no complaints at all in this lip syncing. As you can see, it's very natural because it's just generating the whole frames and frame by frame going through in this. Although it will take longer time, at least we can have a long durations of AI videos generated, you know using the WAN 2.1 right now. So this is good news. Just like you know in Framepack, there's a way Framepack modified the Hun Yuan video to generate long lengths of video. A similar concept like this we have in the WAN 2.1 also. So your audios here will be like in this example, I disabled the audio, and then I created a chatterbox group here and defined the audios and then the numbers of frames here using this tool as an input for the sampling. And here, as you can see, you can set the audio as well as the numbers of frames in this input for the multi-talk embed. So the most important thing is the audio and the numbers of frames you need to set. If you have other sources for the audio, that means like in this part, I am using the text-to-speech for the audio here, and the other thing for the model loader remains the same. The other one that I have tried is this workflow that I have been using previously for this part, especially the flux text-to-image part. I have talked previously in the talking avatar workflow in the fantasy talking video that I mentioned this logic as well. Basically, it is the same logic that I have applied here. For the model loader, I use the flux. And basically, the main, most important thing is that if you're using this, you need to have your own LoRa, your character LoRa, which again, I have talked about using the flux gym, the easiest, dead easiest way to train your own character LoRa. So, I have used that and applied my character LoRa here, and you should train your own character LoRa as well. For in flux, then you can basically use text prompts and generate your character in any video scene that you want to do. So, based on the image reference, it is getting from Flux, and then we bring that to other steps, which is going to be here, you can use either the text-to-speech or use the load audio, either way works. But then one thing is that you need to set your frame numbers differently here where you will need the audios coming from the text-to-speech audio input, not from the file if you're using the chatterbox. And then the next thing is that the models here remain the same, and then moving on to here, as you can see, the other settings here again, you have almost the same as the previous one that I have talked about, and there's nothing much that needs to change in the sampling groups. So basically, you will have your own image, and then generate a long length of videos whichever way you want to use for the text-to-speech, or have your own generated audio or your own audio files for your talking avatar. Here we will be trying out another longer length of video instead of 5 second videos like this. And I have to wait pretty long in this time, over 1 minute something, and most likely I have tried in my previous examples, it is going to be about like 35 minutes. And the other examples I use 44 minutes something like that for the generation. And you see the average of consuming the VRAM, it doesn't need like 20 gigs of VRAM, actually in Comfy UI after optimization, we need about 16 gigabytes of VRAM. I would say that is going to be enough for how many like the models for consuming. And as you can see here, I'm also using FP16 to use for such memory size. And of course, you need the box swap to help you allocate some memories from your RAM as well, whichever way it works. You have to, you know, do your math for your own hardware configurations. That is so far I have tested some results here, and I am going to generate another one similar to what I have shown, using like a podcast style of image, and generate it to speaking. So, as we have used the mini talk to generate a long length of video, and this is coming from my image here that I crop into the WAN 2.1 size for the vertical ratio of the video. And then once we have this, we use the files from my audio that I have used the file path. Now many people have asked me why I use file path instead of the load audio upload. Because when you load audio upload here, and this is normally okay for end users to use that, it will be stored in your input folder. But a lot of times, when I create a workflow, I will use that more in the automation way of running the workflow, incorporating with other AI models or AI agents. Like I previously talked about the NAN AI agents workflow creation builder, that is going to be one of the things I will be using with the Comfy UI workflow. 
So most likely, I will be using a file path here because I save up all those, you know, audio files or video files or image files. So I will be using the path instead of uploading the files. And this is a more handy way and more systematic way if you integrate as a whole system in this way. And so this is what I do and why I am using path instead of uploading files in Comfy UI. Here, we have the settings as I have used. Just one more thing I want to say is testing the Unit 3C. This can be used as a video mask and influence how that looks like. I haven't run this one yet in this video generation, but I will test this soon. Maybe try it in another video that runs the mask for the Unit 3C control net to play around with different camera motions or even the character and how that looks in the motions. So far, this way is more static, a more basic way to run the multi-talk. Just input an image and audio files. I have used about a 1 minute 44 second long length video. That you see this guy. All the motions here are very smooth and all the talking and the hands movements are all naturally generated from the AI models because we are using the WAN 2.1 fine-tuned model, the Fusion X. And we got even better quality. And I have used the FP16, and it is even improving more quality as well for fastening the sampling steps. I use the Light X2V CFG distillation LoRa model. Therefore, we are able to use a very low sampling steps, and I usually test this one. So far, the step 8 is ideally good for running the multi-talk. As you can see, the mouth has not been morphing, or the teeth are like broken, like what you see before in other AI videos. This is pretty nice, and I will be showing this later on at the end of the demo. You guys can check that out. It is just really smooth, like what I have shown in the beginning of the video that I have been generating other talking avatar video demos. Yeah, it is quite impressive. This one I can even say, it's better than the Han Yuan videos avatar that we have tested in the previous tutorial and it is able to use for multi-person talk. We have not yet been able to use multi-person talking in this workflow. And even the WAN videos wrapper, the example workflows, are still the same structure of what I have shown here as well. So maybe we will be able to use the multi-talking avatar sooner or later with the newer update of the WAN video wrapper as well, to make multiple characters talking. That is the beauty of this model. It's able to capture different audio and allocate different audio sounds for the video scenes, determining which person belongs to which audio sounds for the talking. That is the beauty of multi-talk. Check out the timing for me generating the 1 minute 44 second video. <sighs> I have used 43 minutes this time to generate. It does need a while to generate, but the quality is better. You don't need to regenerate 10 times to hope a good one show up. We got the demos of that and it will showing at the end of this video. By the way, if you have enough VRAM to run locally, how long did you take to generate a 2 minutes length of video from this AI? Let me know in the comment section below. Last but not least, let's discuss the G7's push to use AI in the public sector. That's right, governments around the world are looking to integrate artificial intelligence into their operations. The goal is to make public services more efficient and responsive. Now, I don't know about you, but the idea of AI and government both intrigues and terrifies me. On one hand, it could streamline processes, reduce wait times, and make dealing with bureaucracy less of a headache. On the other hand, I can already imagine the glitches. <laughs> Picture this. You need to renew your driver's license, so you interact with an AI chatbot. You say, I need to renew my license, and the AI responds, I'm sorry, I didn't understand that. Did you mean you want to review your license? And you're like, no, license, not license. Or perhaps the AI is in charge of tax filings. It calculates your taxes perfectly, but then decides to audit you because it thinks your pet goldfish is a dependent. But let's be optimistic. If implemented correctly, AI could revolutionize how governments serve their citizens. It could help in areas like healthcare, education, and public safety, making our lives better in tangible ways. Of course, there are challenges to overcome, such as ensuring data privacy, preventing bias in AI algorithms, and making sure that the technology is accessible to all. So, while the idea of AI in the public sector is promising, it's essential that we proceed with caution and keep the human element in the loop. After all, sometimes you just need a real person to talk to, especially when dealing with complex issues. Here's to hoping that AI makes bureaucracy less bureaucratic and more, well, automatic, in a good way.